All right, gentlemen, pop quiz. How many types of scarves can you name? Now, if you're like most guys, the answer to that question is one, maybe two. Well, gents, don't worry. Let me help you out here. So you've got the classic wool scarf. You've got the high-end, incredibly soft cashmere scarves. You've got the lightweight, beautiful, bright colored silk scarves. A common inexpensive option is gonna be the fleece scarf. And enough about materials, let's talk about the different styles. You're gonna see these large circled scarves known as infinity scarves. Not all scarves are gonna be long rectangles. In fact, you're gonna find squares out there that can be tied in a variety of ways. And for some reason, if you're thinking, ah, those aren't masculine, let's check out the bandana. Yes, that scarf worn by cowboys to keep dust basically from going down their shirts. And what about the classic shamak? Anyone that spent time over the Middle East, in the desert, you understand the function of this very versatile piece of clothing, and they do an excellent job of keeping the sand out. Seriously, when I was deployed over in Iraq and Kuwait, I remember seeing a number of soldiers pull this look off and absolutely love it because of its functional purposes. So there you go, gents. You now now know your options. And that's one of the biggest mistakes that most men make when it comes to scarves is they don't even know that they've got options. They don't understand this accessory or how to wear it. And that gentleman is the subject of today's video. All right, Jen, so now you know you've got options, but the second mistake guys make is they think scarves are for women. They see all the different styles, all the different colors. They're like, you know, that's too much for me. Gents, if you think only women should be styling scarves, you don't know your history. Let's go back 2,300 years. Yeah, I'm talking to ancient China. To be specific, we're looking at the third century BCE and the terracotta soldiers. Now, in case you're not familiar with these guys, these are large, lifelike statues that were buried with the first emperor of unified China, Qin Shi Hong. Now, what's amazing about the terracotta soldiers, besides the total number and just the detail and the work that went into them, is how they preserve the look in the uniform of the soldiers of that era. And guess what they're wearing? Scarves for function, not only protection, but identification. The scarves and simply, you know, where they wore them, the colors, this was to identify rank and what units you were a part of. And if you need another manly example, let's look at early aviators, especially during World War I. What were they rocking? Silk scarves. Why? Because you needed that protection. Let's just say that when you're up there, open cockpit, you got the air all over the place. Not only did you need to stay warm, but you didn't want that wind chafing your skin and a scarf serve the purpose of protecting the neck. And speaking of protection, gents, let me ask you a question. What are you doing to protect your skin? Yeah, the largest organ on your body. Guys, if you're doing nothing, you need to start taking action because the winter, just simply the sun, everything is damaging your skin and you want to look good, right? So guys, go over to Vitamin and grab their essential skincare kit. This is everything you need to look your best. Now, the Daily Essential System makes it easy. This is a three-part system. You've got face wash, Twice a day, you're going to wash your face. You've got a face scrub. Twice a week, you're going to scrub your face. You're going to exfoliate. And then you've got a face moisturizer. After you wash your face in the morning, after you wash your face at night, you apply the moisturizer to keep your face looking good. And gentlemen, like all Vitaman products, these are made in Australia with natural and organic ingredients found in the Australian outback. And when it comes to skincare, gents, you want the best. That's why every Vitaman product comes with a 100% money back guarantee. Seriously, gents, as an owner of the company, I stand behind everything we sell at Vitaman. And I just want you to get these products in your hands to see the Vitaman difference. So to do that, down in the description of today's video, I've got the best deal on the web. Seriously, gents, go over to Vitaman, take advantage of this deal. It's not gonna be around forever. So the next mistake a lot of guys make when it comes to wearing a scarf is they don't know how to tie a scarf properly. Now, really quick, let me give you three simple but masculine tie knots. So first up, we've got the four in hand. This is a great choice for longer scarves. Now, this knot is going to protect the neck from the cold, and it's the perfect option when it is freezing outside. So to start with, fold the scarf in half, both length and width wise, and then drape it over your neck. After that, take one of the loose ends and pull it through the loop formed by the folded end. Twist the loop, then pull the other end through the loop. After that, just adjust the knot until it looks how you want it to. All right, now if that one's too complicated, let's really simplify this with the classic Parisian knot. Now, the Parisian knot is a very classic looking scarf knot, and for some reason, a lot of guys don't even know about it. I like it because it provides good warmth to the neck and it's perfect, again, for a little bit longer of a scarf. So you want to start by folding the scarf in half, 
You want to drape it over the neck and then bring the loose ends through the hole formed by the folded end. After this, you just tighten the scarf around the neck, not too tight, and adjust as you want it, and boom, here you go. And if that looks a little bit too over the top for you, you want something that just is not only easy to tie, but simple looking, the twice around. The twice around is a great choice for freezing weather. Next to the four in hand, it's one of the warmest methods out there to wear a scarf, but it's very simple to tie. Again, it works best if you're using a longer scarf. Start off by draping the scarf over your neck. Make one end much longer than the other. Now take the long end and wrap it around your neck. Then repeat again and bring it around your neck a second time. Adjust if needed to completely cover your neck and you're all set for whatever the winter weather has in store for you. Now gents, if you love wearing scarves, do me a favor and smash the like button. If you don't like wearing scarves, if you are now just discovering the scarf, do me a favor and smash the like button. Because when you do this, it lets the YouTube gods know that, hey, this video is worth sharing. All right, gents, so the next mistake a lot of guys make when it comes to scarves is they don't experiment with colors, with patterns, with all the different options they've got out there. Notice how I did change up the color of the scarf. Your eyes are probably drawn to it on that last point. This is not really allowed color. It's a pretty muted color. Now, the pattern definitely draws a little bit of attention, especially when I've got a solid jacket, I've got a solid sweater on. This is what's going to draw the eyes, and that's what you want to leverage when you bring in a scarf. This is such a fun way for you to bring in color, to bring in pattern. When you're starting off with scarves, I get it. Maybe it's something new. You want to bring it into your wardrobe. You want to go with a classic gray. I like gray. It's a non-color that is going to match pretty much anything. And if you're wearing it with clothing that already has color, then yeah, this makes sense. It's a functional accessory. I do like a scarf though that has two colors right in here because you can change it up. Even the little bit of contrast right here makes this a little bit more interesting. And again, you can have fun with this scarf depending on how you fold it, depending on the knot that you go for. But yeah, bringing in a scarf like this, which not only, I mean, it's relatively a thicker scarf as well, but this pattern right here, not only is this warm because it's again, first functional, but this color just allows me to have a little bit more fun with, you know, bringing it in and just simply pulling it off with my outfits. Now, if you want to get away from the function, you can actually bring in more decorative scarves. And you're going to find these are made from a variety of materials from linen to silk to sometimes polyester. This one right here has a very subtle pattern. You got a paisley in there, just absolutely beautiful. Now, scarves like this, if tied properly, can look great and to a degree protect the neck, but they're not going to have the same insulating properties as wool, as cashmere, as maybe mohair. And let's talk about those different fabrics and why you would want to choose them. So, for the guy just starting off, I'm going to highly recommend that you stick with wool. It's relatively easy to find and it's got great insulating properties, not only when it's dry, but also when it's wet. So, if you're sweating, it's going to absorb the sweat and it's going to actually keep you warm. Wool has this really unique property that it can absorb almost its full weight in basically water and it still feels dry. Now, a drawback with wool is you have to take care of it. You can't just throw this into the washing machine. That's going to end up ruining the scarf. It can also be a little bit pricey depending on where you buy them. Uh, you will find blends and blends are interesting. If you you find something, you like the feel of it, nothing wrong with going with it. Now, what about polyesters? What about synthetic materials, flannels and things like that? I think that they are fine, especially if you are a man on a budget. Now, long term, and usually the styling of them isn't going to be as nice unless you go with a solid color. The feel, people can tell if it would go up, you know, that it isn't a, a wool or a cashmere or anything like that. But I think from a functionality perspective, they do serve a great purpose. And if you want to own a variety of scarves, again, you've got a really tight budget. I think that it's perfectly acceptable to have a man made fiber scarf. Now, what about cashmeres? What about mohairs? So these are are going to be higher end and oftentimes again you're going to see them blended with wools but they're just going to cost more they aren't going to have any better insulating properties than wool maybe they're just going to feel a little bit softer they're going to be more exclusive you'll find a lot of high end brands start to bring in really unique patterns and looks that other people pick up on so for a status symbol i do see why some people 
pick them up and why they love them, especially if you're into fashion. And again, if it's just something you enjoy, you really find one that, hey, yes, it costs three times more than just an average wool, but you really like the pattern, you're going to wear the heck out of it, then go for it. I've talked about, you know, my, what is it, my style theory of value. And this is how does something when you wear it make you feel? And then take that cost. And when you divide it by the number of wears, you may find, because if you wear this thing for five years, almost every day during the winter, you are going to, you're going to get more than your money's worth out of it versus a scarf that, yeah, just is a bit itchy. You don't really like, and you rarely ever wear that you spent, yes, one third as much, one fourth as much, but you never felt good in it. Now, what about silk scarves? So you notice that this is a blue, this is a blue, different shades of blue, but also a different feel and a different sheen on the surface. Silk does have that look and it's very, you know, for lightweight protection, silk is fine. Right now, it's like negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm not going to be wearing a silk scarf for functionality. Silk scarves have a long storied history with aviators and a lot of women love to wear them to decorate or basically draw attention. A lot of fashion forward men love to wear them as well. I think that it can work great with a sports jacket. Is it going to be something I'm going to recommend for a guy just starting off? The answer would be no. But again, if you are getting into this, if you really like to be able to bring in a bit of color, there's nothing wrong with grabbing a silk scarf. Again, if you love the pattern, you love the overall look. I do think larger silk scarves can look really nice. Smaller ones like this that don't have, you know, they're just, you know, big rectangles. So, so, but I've seen square ones, especially from higher end brands that just look amazing. But again, if it's your thing, if you're a little bit more fashion forward, then guys, rock it and enjoy it. And by the way, gents, if you've got a favorite type of scarf, I want to hear from you down in the comments, the colors, the patterns, what looks good on you, maybe your favorite brands. Guys, I want to hear from you down in the comments below. Now, this next mistake is relatively tiny, except when it's not. And that is to take good care of your scarf, to keep track of them, especially if you're buying one in wool. And you can throw it around until you put it in an area that all of a sudden moths find it and they, yes, eat holes into it. So, take good care of your luxury materials. Silk, yes, you bought that nice silk scarf, but you didn't store it properly and it gets, for some reason, wet. It develops mold. These are the type of things that when you spend good money on something, I do hope that you take care of it. Now, let's talk about the blends in materials. Blends, one of the issues you can have when you've got different lengths of fabric and fibers intertwining, intermixing with each other, is that you can get pilling. If you start to see pilling on a scarf, one of the easiest things to do is simply take a razor and to remove it. But understand if you're seeing pilling over time, the scarf is going to lose some of its, it basically, you know, that, that pilling, that material is going somewhere. You're taking it off. So, it's going to lose over time some of its thickness and it will eventually, yeah, probably not be something that you'll want to use in five to 10 years. That being said, I know that I've got quite a few scarves and I really haven't had really too many issues with pilling, but I do know if you've got one that you wear all the time, some people have reached out to me about it. And let's also talk about cleaning. So, if you wear the same scarf every day, again, it's picking up sweat, it's picking up skin. This is something that you don't want to invite, you know, mites or tiny bugs. They would, yeah, I mean, so once a season, send it out to be cleaned whenever you send out your sweaters and your jackets. Uh, but, you know, if you don't wear them very often, I think you can go years between cleaning them or do it yourself. Now, really quick, what's some practical advice to start wearing a scarf, especially one that maybe brings in patterns and colors? And the answer is wear it to and from work. A lot of people, they reserve these fancy scarves when they're going out, you know, to meet with friends, they're going on a date, maybe they're going out with their woman. They want to look good and so, but they feel a little bit like an imposter. Here's the thing, because you haven't practiced wearing it. Just simply make it a part of your outfit. Put it with your jackets. Hey, put the scarf right in there. I always tuck it into the arms of my jacket so I've got different scarves I can wear. I just wear them to and from work for nobody but myself. And when you practice wearing the scarf, you get used to the scarf being on your neck, being around you. You just start to actually feel in love it. You start start to pick up maybe your favorite fragrances. You start to smell them in there. But here's the thing is you forget about it. And when you forget about it, it becomes just part of you, part an extension of your style. And all of a sudden you're throwing it and you're not even thinking about it till someone says, you know what? Like he is always looking good. I love his choice of scarves. I wish my husband, I wish my boyfriend, I wish other people would start to just look. I mean, it just, it's, you just start putting it together. And you also have fun with different jackets, different outfits. It becomes an accessory that 
maybe before you never paid any attention to, all of a sudden you start noticing other guys pulling off looking great in scarves. You give them compliments. And by the way, that's the secret to getting compliments is you give them. And uh, yeah, you just start to notice the world of scarves and all the options, all the colors it brings to your outfits. So, what to watch next? How about stop wearing these seven items because they're making you look old. I put this video out a while back, but it is still relevant, especially if you're in your late 20s, 30s, 40s. Come on, you don't want to look like you're 150 years old. Go check it out, guys. Stop wearing this stuff because it is doing you no favors.